Hello and welcome to Mac Format's weekly Apple extravaganza. I'm Chris Finn. I'm Matt Bolton. And on this episode we talk about the App Store. Clackety keyboards. And the beautiful new iPad Air 2 and the even more astonishingly gorgeous 5K iMac. Let's start with that new snarled of Apple. The App Store is doomed, is my I thesis for this... Uh, is your thesis, or I've seen some other people's that's true. thesis is... Thesis. 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 Mm. Well, it's gone, gone, gone well so far. Uh, so, uh, the problem with the App Store is not that there isn't an amazing variety of stuff there, or even that there's good stuff there, because both those things are true. Which App Store are we talking about now? The Mac, sorry, the iOS App Store for iPhone. Oh, okay, I was reading that the Mac App Store is doomed. Well, I'm so. specifically talking about the, the iOS App Store, although the... the problem that, I say I've identified, that has been identified with it, um, is applicable to both the Mac App Store and the iOS App Store. The pr basic problem is, Apple is being wildly inconsistent in applying its own review guidelines. Right. Which is making developers understandably very nervous. Because if you don't know whether or not your app will be approved or rejected, how do you know that you want to spend time and money developing yes. for that platform? Um, Are you referring to the pCalc? This was it. Indeed. So uh, James Thompson, a Scottish developer, uh, has a great calculator app for iPhone, really well regarded, and he introduced a, a new version recently which uh, allowed calculation to be performed from the notification centre uh, drop down, the today view effectively. Yeah, yeah, he added a calculator in, in, exactly. in the notification widget sprouting uh, region, yes. And the great problem with this, with well, the huge irony of this particular motion was that Apple told him to remove it, or rather he could remove that functionality or he could remove the app completely. It had been on sale for a month, Indeed, six weeks. having approved it, it was on sale. He could either remove it or remove the functionality uh, because they said we may not perform calculations in Notification Center. You can enter the formula there, but you have to tap a button to bounce it to an app to actually do the calculation itself. And the great irony was that not only had they approved it and was on sale, they were featuring it yes. in the great iOS 8 widgets section of uh, the iTunes Store. Now. Apple has since done another U-turn, yes. and I've just lost track of the number of gyrations the it's done, um, and said, it's fine, you go girl, uh, so it will remain on sale. Yes. But again, that doesn't solve the fundamental problem, which is that we just don't know how these rules are going to be applied. Yes, and there'll be lots of, like, uh, James Thompson isn't a huge development force, but he is reasonably well-known and well-liked within... Uh, the people who are capable of kicking up a fuss yes. and the people who have an ear at Apple. Yes. Uh, smaller developers, less well-known developers don't. They Indeed. might not get this kind of... There was an outcry over the fact that they were asking him to pull it and obviously someone has steered Apple in the correct course but a small developer won't have that luxury. Indeed. And we need them all to be treated the same if everyone is going to have a chance to do well. And to, and to enrich the platform and to make it a better experience for us all. But it's not even just small developers. There was a terrific letter from David somebody's surname is linked to in the comments below. Uh, sorry, David, I can't remember your surname. Talking about, he'd written an open letter to Apple on the 25th before the, the PCALC debacle yes. for widget class and widget gate. Um, and it said in it that obviously it's not just small developers that this effect is everyone because it might be that you've come up with the next Uber, you've come up with the next Instagram, you've come up with the next Facebook. But if you're trying to pitch it to venture capitalists, as you would need to do in order to build it, if they can't be sure that the thing that you're doing, which relies on a slightly left of centre, slightly oblique way of doing something on iOS, for example, if they can't rely on the fact that that will be approved by Apple or not, why would they sink yeah. tens of millions? Or if you're, pitch, you're part of a, a corporate structure and you're just asking for resources from your bosses for mm. them to invest in, I've got a great business idea for our company, yeah. if they're not certain, they're not going to put in yeah. the 100,000, whatever it is you need, to get it off the ground. And it sounds a little bit like a, a kind of inside baseball concern. It sounds a bit like... Um, why would this affect you, know, you who owns an iPhone? Because it's just whether well, developers can add esoteric functionality to their apps. But I think the point that I'm making is that it, 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 it re retards the innovation and the richness of the entire platform. And what's more, even more worrying is that when Apple introduces the Apple Watch, when it needs innovation to be at its most flourishing to demonstrate the functionality and the validity of this new platform, that's the very point at which developers will be even more nervous. Yeah, and I saw someone say, basically, 
on Twitter, if you want me to develop something for your new watch, you'd better tell me what's going to be accepted or rejected. Yeah, what's going to flow? Or I'm not gambling. It? Yeah, exactly. Um, so basically, the app store is not doomed. It's a it's a ridiculous thing to say, but it's, uh, it's it's got enough momentum and there's enough richness there already. Um, and frankly, I think most people only need sort of half a dozen apps, and it's the, you know, the as long as you've got Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and WhatsApp on your phone, whatever <laughs> platform you're using, generally you'll be happy with that. Yeah. But, but it's it's not a good sign for the But platform. technology doesn't stand still. We, yeah. we move on to Instagram is young. What's the next Instagram? Exactly that. Let's, however, move on now to the wider world of tech. So, Chris. Yes, Matthew. Uh, seeing as it is your last extravaganza. And my last day at Future at Mac Format. Indeed. Uh, I thought uh, for, for the wider world of tech thing, I'll come up with an actual piece of news, but it's just <laughs> to let you talk about something you like. Right. The MSI GT80 Titan is an 18-inch gaming laptop that's just been announced, uh, and it has a mechanical keyboard. I saw that. With Cherry mm. uh, XT keys. Mm. Um, proper, proper, clackety-clack. Yeah. Anywhere. Yeah. You can annoy people, people on the train even more. Do you want to talk about the Matthias keyboards and, and, can and you, your, lo- your can, dream? Can you imagine using that in like a carriage, in the quiet carriage, but, but in if, Starbucks? Or like if you were like a professional, uh, part of like the, one of the professional gaming leagues or something, really putting off your opponents, yes. they're all silently tapping away <laughs> on Apple's like, chiclet keyboards. You're like, <laughs> whacky, 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 whacky. Especially um, StarCraft, where you have to do kind of 200 key combinations a minute. Yeah. So we talked about the Matthias um, extended keyboard on a previous episode we did, we of the Extravaganza. We had it. We, had it, we, had it, we, we, we showed it off, and it's a fab thing. And it uses, as you say, the the proper mechanical key switches, not the chiclet style scissor switches that the modern keyboards use. Um, and it's a very different experience of typing. It makes what you do seem much more deliberate. <laughs> it seems like you're really making a difference in the world <laughs> when you're um, typing the great American novel or just a review of an iPhone case um, on this thing. It, it, it imbues it with import <laughs> yeah. and relevance. And what it does also do, though, is wildly annoy any colleagues within a good several hundred foot radius. Yeah, because they did the silent Matthias keyboard. Which is quieter. I don't think this is the silent no. version. No, I mean, it's, it's genuinely the case that when I was... Um, Reviewing. Oh, actually, I wasn't formally reviewing it, but I was trying out the Matthias. And I've used it before, but we had one in for a group test, and my friend was doing, and I was using it, and there was people coming from right across the office, and it was a big office floor we were in. I mean, it, it's... I'm terrible at measurements. Many, many metres. They were coming <laughs> to yes, complain. It is that many metres. <laughs> uh, uh, about, what would you say, maybe like um, 30, 40 metres? From, from me to like where Dan Oliver was, or round the corner to where, um, where the craft division is now. I tell me about... 10, 15 to where Dan Oliver was. But yeah, around the corner, tw- 25, yeah. 30 metres. Because um, it's loud. It really is. It is very distracting as well. But however, this being my last day, I'll be working at home from now on. I can be as noisy as I damn well please. Well, I might annoy the neighbours upstairs, it has to be said. It genuinely could be noisy <laughs> enough to annoy neighbours upstairs. Uh, and if you're working in the evening, your wife. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bedroom just next door. Uh, my wife won't be able to sleep. Um, it's really interesting that they're doing it. There's a real revival in this, and especially in the gaming community. I know there are several sort of um, crowd funded crowd sourcey type things to design. Their pitch for this is precision, yes. basically. the like Once that key depresses, you know you've pressed it. Yeah. It switches down. Yeah. It is definitely yeah. pressed. Oh, I will say that when I... I, I do use Matthias keyboard sometimes, um, but mostly for larks and kind of for the, the retro feel of it. Um, because I find that it slows me down a lot because you, there's a lot of physical force required <laughs> to press the keys, which sounds like a ridiculous thing to say, but I can I can fly on the little chiclet keys of uh, the recent ones. The, the gaming community though seems to really embrace this, but there is a, there is a revival in these mechanical keyboards. People do seem to be maybe it's a hipster thing though. Maybe that's all it is. Well, this kind of thing is cyclical because like we liked having the chiclet ones because they still feel quite nice, but sort of lower Christmas profile there. and. Um, and they just like they have a convenience advantage of their own. And then once you got used to the convenience, you start looking for something else. Yeah. And that other thing is, what about the, you, the, the really loud, clicky? Yeah. It wasn't that nice. Yeah. Oh, it, it was nice. I'd, I'd forgotten about all the massive inconveniences. <laughs> Did you see the Hemingway Wright, by the way? 
yes. um, which is the, the most hipster thing imaginable. It's, it's basically a, a mechanical keyboard with a tiny little screen attached to it yes. um, as a essentially the sort of modern reinvention of the typewriter. But I saw a lot of people saying, I know it sounds ridiculous, I know this sounds like the, the most hipster, pointless bit of kit ever, because it doesn't run Windows or Mac or anything, it's just a essentially like the old electronic typewriters that yeah. took us from typewriters into the PC age. Um, but actually, everyone who's tried it has sort of gone, this does kind of make sense for me. It's got very long battery life, very focused just on the act of writing. I was going to say that the focused, uh, distraction-free environment. And as I think I've said on the show before, I found that when I... I don't do it anymore, but when I used to write on the iPad with a external keyboard, I liked it because it focused me on doing the job in hand. And it meant that I'd find myself command-tabbing, as you would on a Mac, to switch between apps. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't do anything, obviously, because... Keyboard combo doesn't do anything on iOS, but that that very fact would alert me to the fact that I was allowing myself to be distracted out of the task I was actually trying to do. When you first brought up the Hemingway Wright, I couldn't remember for a second which one that was. I thought maybe you were talking about the Comic Sans typewriter that no. someone did. Yes, but that that would also be lots of fun. Which is good. The Comic Sans, <laughs> Google the Comic Sans typewriter. It's actually a really nice little art piece. A comment on um, on how we communicate in society, and it's genuinely quite clever. Also, just lovely. Is a nice idea. Let's move on to our kit for this week. So then, the iMac with Retina 5K display. It's yes. lovely. It's really nice. It just is lovely. It's stupid. There's just so much of it. Yeah. And it's so nice. Yeah. Um, I mean, like on the one hand, it's... Disappointing is the wrong word, but underwhelming maybe, because it just looks like an iMac. You know, it's the same uh, design that we've seen before. Yeah. Uh, exactly the same. Like It literally hasn't changed in the slightest on the outside. That's what they told me. Um, although the packaging has changed very slightly. Yes, the packaging is slightly larger than the old packaging for extra padding yes. because of just protect the just screen. Um, this is your first time seeing yeah. one. I saw one a couple of weeks ago. You saw one at the launch event. This is the first time I've seen it, and it is so, so beautiful. I've been actually using it for about a day. Um, and for one thing, I'm not used to using a 27-inch iMac. You are. You've got one of these at home. Well, one of I, the 27-inch iMacs at home. Yes, I have the... Rubbish kind. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> the now very disappointing kind. Yes, uh, but the, it, the 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 sheer level of density and beauty in the screen. The same thing has happened with um, Apple when it introduced the Retina uh, iPhone four and then the Retina MacBook Pros. It's not for me. It's not even the detail. It's the fact that everything looks so dense and flat. And if you've got an area blank of blank whiteness, it just looks completely blank and inert and white. Beautiful. It's, yeah, and it, oh, it's just a stupid amount of pixels. 14.7 million yeah. pixels. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my, my iMac is now four years old. Mm. I, I, I wonder if I can justify well, replacing the, it. The thing is, as well, it, it's funny how people take it in different ways. I've been talking to people in the office, obviously, as soon as we get a new bit of Apple Kit in, just everyone gathers around the desk to look at it. Mm. Uh, we share an office with T3 Magazine, with Tech Radar, with PC Format, a whole bunch of different people, and everyone always yeah. comes around, congregates around. And the, the price thing is quite interesting because I've never heard, heard anybody say, oh, that seems all right. I've either heard people say, that's pretty good, actually, or that's wildly expensive. Right. Um, because it's 1999. Nine nine nine. No, just three nines. It's two thousand dollars. Uh, two thousand pounds. <laughs> yes. Uh, two and a half thousand dollars. Two thousand pounds. Um, which is you know not a small amount of money. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it is a beautiful bit of kit. Incredibly capable. Uh, yeah, I think it's. Um, you have to take into account a few kind of compromises for its size. The usual ones the iMacs have. It, uh, for the most part, like laptop parts instead of desktop parts, yeah. and you know that means a slightly weaker. Graphics card graphics in than, you, than you might expect from a two thousand pound machine, yeah. but the display alone is just brilliant. And that, like, you know, it is nice. You compromise on power, but it takes up not much space on your desk for something this big, and that is as powerful as it is and looks like it does. And you can even get um, a model as you can with other my iMac with a, a Vesa mount at the back. So rather than yes. it being on a stand, the Vesa mount is a standard kind of uh, mounting system. So there are lots of like cantilevered counterweighted yeah. um, arm you could put it on so that you could sort of you know do this kind of business it around if you want yeah. to, which, which would be really nice as well one interesting tip that we got from Apple when I went through to see them to talk about this is that uh, 
there are so many pixels here, essentially there is no interconnect that will allow them to be driven from a single cable. So inside this, the, logically, so not really, not physically, but logically what Apple's doing is driving two halves of the screen simultaneously, separately, yeah. using Which the one point two inch. Uh, cinema displays used but to work. But with the cinema displays, you could see a, a dividing line because that was literally two panels concatenated together. Whereas here, it's, as far as we can tell, it's one panel, but just each half of it is being addressed um, separately, independently. Oh, I see. So there is, um, there is a incoming interconnect standard, DisplayPort display 1.3, which will allow even up to 8K um, screens to be powered, yeah. but that's not what we're doing here. There is actually, there are two cables essentially inside this. And then they come into this one Actually, chip it's one cable, but it's... One uh, chip times them and then controls the whole thing. I see. Yeah. And that's, that's, we think, possibly why, because with this one, unlike the other iMacs, it doesn't support target display mode, i.e. you cannot use this as a monitor for a, a MacBook or another Mac. And I suspect that that slight hackiness is part of why. Yes, that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, especially as that external cable won't be two cables. Exactly. That'll just be one cable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's the screen is absolutely phenomenal. Mm. Uh, and the, the the lower reflectivity as well. Not just not new to this model. I've been doing it for a little while, but the lower re reflectivity is noticeable. I put it side by side with the iMac that I use at work, which is a 2011. Mm -hmm, it's a Core i5 2011 iMac, and you could really see the difference. There's a picture on Mac Format's Twitter account, twitter.com forward slash Mac Format. You can see that there. It's also linked to in the comments below, um, and you, you notice know, the difference. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. There's a big difference, and. Uh, when you put things, um, put these huge kind of Hasselblad photographs on it, the amount of detail you can, you can lose yourself in the detail. You just, out. you just can. You just be spending days finding. It's almost like a sort of where's Wally of where things are in the scene. The thing that got to me is that you know I could take a picture on my iPhone six, and it will take up um, this much yeah. of the screen, yeah. not even two thirds, yeah. Yeah. just over half yeah. at, at full size. Yeah. So that's an 8, eight megapixel yeah. photo, but this is a 14.7 megapixel screen, essentially. It's ridiculous. It's nuts. It's beautiful. I, I do, for, uh, for the first time in a long time, I, I, I want a piece of Apple desktop stuff. But actually, I, I wanted the Mac Pro as well, in fairness. But, but there's it. something about this yeah. that is just wantable. Just oh, yeah. Thing. Absolutely. As soon as you see it, it spoils you completely. Yes, exactly. When I turn from this iMac to my non-retina iMac, it just looks pants. Um, that's it for this show, and indeed, that is it for the time being, at least for the Mac Format Weekly Apple Extravaganza. This, as Matt alluded to at the beginning, is my last day at Mac Format. Um, there is a new editor, Christian, he's a fantastic guy, he'll do amazing things, amazing things with the magazine, um, but until he gets his feet under the table, we're going to put the Mac Format Extravaganza on hold. So you can subscribe to the YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash macformatuk because there will be more videos coming, we just don't quite know when and what they'll be. You can catch up with previous episodes, relive our glory days on the Mac Format Extravaganza by clicking the button in the middle of your screen and you can, of course, regardless of all that, try the Mac Format iPad edition. You can try that free at macformat.com forward slash iPad. Thank you very much for watching all of our shows. We shall see you soon, I'm sure. I hope. Bye. Anything particularly you want to focus on with the back? I'd probably mention the screen. Good, right, good.